Hello, everyone. Hi. There's, um, so we did, me and Professor did a video. <laughs> and then none of, none of my audio actually recorded. So you might see at the beginning or the end, like a, like a 10 minute snippet of the best things I think he said through that. If I can get around to drudging through the three hours of audio, <laughs> I will, I will get through it. I'll get through the three hours, but it'll just be, it'll, it'll be hell. Or it might just be its own kind of one-off video. But as you can see, this is also on the SoundCloud as part of the Ramble On podcast area, which is kind of just a, Ramble On sits as a podcast that used to, it started out as where I talked about music because it was named after the song Ramble On by Led Zeppelin, I think. And then from there, it moved into being topic discussions about just grabbing a random topic from a topic generator. And then it moved into being talking about different questions about anything. And I think now it's just going to be a podcast of whatever happens, happens. And it's just kind of there. I don't really think I need a, I don't think I need a subject. This isn't Mabim Bam, which is my brother, my brother and me, for those who don't know. Or like anything like that. It's not. It's not a, a centralized podcast. It just kind of exists. And I think I'm going to use this as a proxy episode for a proxy episode four or five, I think. And it'll just kind of sit where it needs to sit. But welcome, Professor Sakharam, the guest. Oh, thanks for having me. Yeah. It's a pleasure. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah, like a couple days ago. Yeah, woo. <laughs> I looked at my watch. My watch not even isn't even on me, and this is an audio only cast, so I don't know why I looked at my watch. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> yup. But we did a long, very long discussion ish oh <laughs> about Pokemon and other stuff because about two weeks ago now, I think tomorrow's two weeks. Yeah. Uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield were announced and. I'm excited for that. And I think mm -hmm. through here, through the video as well, you'll see, if you're on the video side of it, you'll see the different pictures kind of go up slideshow style of the different pictures Professor sent me about different fan art or leaks. It, it really haven't had anything confirmed about what starter evolutions could be or just kind of fan art of what we would like to see. And through this, I think we're just going to kind of do similar. We're just kind of going to talk about what we kind of want to see through this and what we think would be cool to see in, in the game itself. And I think I want to start, if it's okay with you, I kind of want to start with the region and talk about the region a little bit. Yeah. Because the yeah, Gala region I... just looks awesome. I agree. I agree. Um at first glance, I gotta say, it wasn't anything to write home about. Like, I it wasn't something that super excited me, and it, until it started like becoming more apparent what it really was, and when you really look at the nitty gritty of like the detail that's on it already, you start to see that Galar is a, a much more expansive region than previous regions are, at least from what we can see in in the pictures. Yeah. That was a weird mouth noise I made. All right, is there dead air or is it just not picking you up? Huh? Okay. Oh, it's 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 kind of dead air. Okay, yeah, okay. I wanted to make sure. Yeah, but no, um, as, as well, I mean, I was very excited when I saw it because I'm a big um, pr proprietor. That's not the word. I'm a big uh, fan patron. There we go. Of of the Sumerian religion or mythology, depending on how you want to put it. And to me, the Galar region looked very similar to old time Sumeria, just kind of flipped one way, which is something they've done before. I mean, the Kanto region was the the tip of Japan, flipped upside down. I think if I remember mm -hmm. that right, and then um, Jodo region was the like, kind of the 
Niigata, the something like the, that. That prefecture kind of flipped to the side because they wanted the water at the bottom and top, not at the sides. And then I think um, Hoenn was the islands, the different like the islands off of the coast of Okinawa prefecture. If I'm remembering the map of Japan right. And kind of jumbled a little bit, but they were all moved there. And then after that, I think they really got into making their regions more different, where Sinnoh was kind of not really based wholly on a part of Japan, but more being a region that has ties to different things. And then we go into Mm -hmm. Unova and Kalos. Kalos was France. Very easy to call it France. I mean, when when I first saw the map of Kalos, I was like, oh, hi, France! Like it just looks exactly yeah. like what France looks like, and then, and then not only that, like Unova is New York, it's New yeah. York City, and uh, parts of Jersey on the side. Uh, it's like the like the entire central part of that region is the island of Manhattan. Yeah. Uh, inspired, uh, and then the sides are like New Jersey based. Well, I mean, and, I and I know for a fact they have the Flatiron Building in Unova because that's that's a hard thing not to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like there's. Just like I think with Galar, we're going to have a city that's heavily inspired by London. Uh, we're going to have a lot of features. We had a lot of features in in, in Unova that had uh, that were referenced to things about New York. Uh, the biggest one, which I always I always find very interesting, is that I believe it's Route Four. It's the route just north of Castilia City between uh, Castilia and um, I think it's. It's Nimbasa, yeah, Nimbasa City. That's all the desert. Uh, which, yeah. if you put it on over top the map of of New York, that section kind of highlights an area that's where the World Trade Center were, was. The Twin oh Towers. wow, yeah. So and there's kind of like lore inside Unova that the buildings were destroyed because of um. I think it was because of a meteor strike or because of an alien attack or whatever, or, or aliens came crashing down, like LG and, and the, EM the, and such like the that. The dome things going on, or like the big building things going on in the desert. Not in Kalos, but in Unova. They had some sort of random building in there. Yeah, they had like these construction buildings off on the yeah. side. And then like if you head down a little more... Uh, and there's like the fork in the road between getting up to Nimbasa and then to the left, there's like the desert resort. Um, and they have like ruins over that way. Um, which is always, which is always kind of neat. I always like to see how they adapt certain elements of, of places. Yeah. And it's it. And I, I really want to see that. What I want to see the most from Galler is I actually want to see them do something with Liverpool because if you don't know, yeah. I don't know how much you know about, um, England. But, it's very little, but, but Liver- <laughs> Liverpool is basically the same as like in Austin, Texas. It's like mm-hmm. a live music capital of England. If I'm getting that wrong, mm-hmm. please let me know. That's what I've heard. I don't know how true that is. That's only what I've heard. I've been to England. But it's where like I know the Beatles were from. At least two of them were from Liverpool. All of Bring a Horizon was from Liverpool. A lot of the people in Asking Alexandria played or lived in Liverpool a bunch of people from a bunch of different um, mm-hmm. UK bands were in Liverpool. I know for a fact, Rag and Bone Man, he's a English soul artist who loves to play in Liverpool because he just loves the town. It's a very big music centric city. And I mm-hmm. would love to see them put in a, a musical spectrum into there because I don't know. I don't even know if any, most people in the Wolfpack know this. I'm, I'm actually a drummer myself. Oh, that's awesome. I've been a drummer for 17 years-ish. That's pretty cool. And I have a big, nice drum set at home, but it's not with me where I live currently because I don't have room for it because it's fucking huge. <laughs> it's a seven, it's an eight-tom drum set with a bass drum, a nice big snare, three big cymbal stands with weights on them so that they don't move mm-hmm. when you hit the cymbals. And I unfortunately have broken all my symbols at this point because they've been around since I was seven. Wow. And I mean, I remember the first, I mean, I'm going to go a little off topic, but the first drum set I had, I will never forget what it looked like. The first drum set I had, because I didn't get the kid drum set. I didn't, I never got to work on a kid drum set. So it was a very big change for me because I'm a very small human being. I am five, four. Mm. 
a very not big person, so the drumsticks were always big, and the drum set was always big, so I always had to raise the chair up. But I had a two-tom set, and if I don't know if you know what a two-tom set means. I don't know how into music uh, you are. In. Just in case others don't know, it's probably better to explain it anyway. Yeah, true. A two-tom set means that you have two mounted toms plus a four-tom. Technically, it's considered a three-tom unmounted set as well. You can unmount those toms. But mine was a forged piece, so it meant that the toms were forged into the base kick itself so that mm. they couldn't be moved off as well. That made tuning a bitch. But <laughs> um, I had this really shitty snare, and I had this really crappy um, – these really crappy two-tom sets that we actually had to put rags on to make them not ring because we couldn't tune them then my floor tom wouldn't tune correctly because of something else, some rust or something in there. It was a $190 drum set, I think. Mm -hmm. It was very cheap, but my stepdad fronted the money for it to pay for it because he knew I really wanted to play because I always played on his drummer's drum set when he was home. And so I didn't take formal lessons. My that His band's drummer just taught me how to drum through that, and then from there I just kind of moved on. But I'd love to see a music-centric thing happen in Pokemon because there's always been a, not a big one, but always a music element to the Pokemon games. Just to bring up X and Y, I mean, there was the Poke Flute, which yeah, one of my favorite things yeah. about Poke Flute is the guy who owns the Poke Flute said it's really hard to play. If you've ever tried to play a flute, it's fucking difficult. It is a oh, yeah. ridiculously hard instrument to play. Yeah, I played trombone in band, so I got the short end of the stick in playing the mm -hmm. instrument that was as tall as me. I'm not actually kidding. Mm -hmm. When I was a kid, that was as tall as I was. That's really funny. I was tiny. Yeah, uh, back when I was in school, uh, I um, I played the trumpet. Uh, at least that's what the 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 place I wanted to go. But I ended up uh. Not getting a real trumpet. I got something that's a little smaller but does the same thing. Oh. It's called a cornet. Yeah. Cornets um, are fun. So it's still the exact same thing. You still learn to play it the exact same way. Its sound is a little different, though, because it does it can't be tuned the exact same way a trumpet has yeah, to be it's, tuned. Yeah, it's tuned in A, um, isn't it? Not tuned in B like a trumpet. Honestly, I couldn't tell you because I stopped playing back when I was in seventh grade. Uh, so probably over 10 years ago i stopped playing what's it called um, now? because a cornet cornet yeah um i forget exactly like what all the details are of it because i didn't really get into learning all of that uh but the teacher i had at the time just like i felt like was pressuring me and putting like a lot of stress on me that i didn't really like it anymore and so i stopped doing that and i switched to course and then i've kind of been singing ever since uh, which has been – it's kind of a trademark on, on my channel that I, I sing a lot too, which is funny. Um, but going back to, to Pokemon Sword and Shield, I do think that music could play an element in in some part of the region in some capacity. Um, just because there's a, there's a lot of stuff, I think, that has potential of it. Like, if you think about – like, when I think of, like, areas like Scotland or – like which is a place in the uk which galler is based off of or inspired by um i think of the bagpipes it's like mm -hmm. one of the first things i think about when i like bagpipes and haggis are the first yeah. few things i think about when i think of scotland it's a little bit of spotted dick um, <laughs> <laughs> and like so 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 i really do think that music could be an element in it somehow um yeah I, and i think from but I think for me personally, uh, like I'm really excited to see what like mythos of of Galar exists and are inspired from like you you United Kingdom mythos. Um, so kind of kind of like some of what we got in Sun and Moon with like Hawaiian, I guess Sun and Moon stuff. I don't really know a lot about it, and I'm probably really butchering it. 
But I'd like to see stuff like that. Like, there's a place that looks like it's inspired directly by Sherwood Forest from the Robin Hood tales. And so I'd love to see something, like, Robin Hood-esque themed in it, because they're one of my favorite folk heroes of all time. That's the thing. I was actually reading this after we did the video before I had checked the audio of it. I read something about um, Grookey, which which made me... Because I, I know you've, you've mentioned Grookey as being Harlequin, the playwright character that you've talked about. Yes. Um, and I don't, I know you said you had a Twitter debate about it, but, um, something that I, I read about him was Grookey becoming something of a har uh, not a Harlequin, a Robin Hood-esque creature. Not, not exactly That's Robin Hood, not exactly Harlequin, kind of a, a mix between, um, the, the character Robin Hood and, and a, and a more musical character because Robin Hood was very highly, I don't know if you've ever, ever read the original Robin Hood story. Yeah, I'm not I'm not entirely I'm mostly familiar with like uh Disney's interpretation and Robin Hood Men in Tights. Yeah. Which Men uh, in Tights is probably the best way you can learn about Robin Hood. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised to be honest. <laughs> if if you like Val Kilmer, no, not Val Kilmer. God, what's his name? I don't remember. Anyways, um but Robin Hood is very musical. He's very music centric. It's what he's yes. about and that was loud. Sorry, microphone was too close to my face. And I would love to <laughs> see this. You know, Grookey can be playing that drum, but Robin Hood was very musical and very made by music kind of thing. If he didn't have the music right. behind him, he wouldn't be the guy he was. And so I'd love to see either on on a playwright spectrum or a Robin Hood spectrum or a little bit of both. See Grookey kind of come into this light of being this um, musical genius kind of conductor slash fighter in yeah. in the starter evolutions anyways right um and to 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 not not to argue that but like we have to we also kind of have to remember that uh decidui is very heavily influenced by robin hood in in design aspects yeah with like literally the green hood and then the bow and arrow like because robin hood's i think most famous trait is probably the archery contest uh at least in in at, like towards the end of the story um so i'm not sure how much we'll get of a robin hood based character especially right after that and also being the grass starter again but i did see something recently actually this morning that was um the re during during the time of sun and moon there was a person on 4chan or wherever uh leaking stuff called the riddler uh and instead of like outright like saying these are the things that are happening he would post pictures of hints and stuff that would connect to the release the stuff that was being released beforehand like like or so or, or he would post stuff that would be then confirmed down the line later um just based off of these pictures and stuff that he had and i can't remember anything like exactly uh off of what he had posted previously but for this most recent one um they the final evolution for grookey kind of had a son goku uh look to it with huh. with like the the pole staff so sort of like how you know goku and dragon ball has the power pole yeah and it's like something like that um he pulled up a, like they pulled up a picture of like a monkey with a staff and i'm like that would be interesting too considering we also have infernape who is kind of also based on that character yeah so i'm wondering what they're gonna do and i don't know where they're gonna go with any of this i mean also going back and like reading some of the other translations for Grookey's name in other languages, there's a lot of like uh um signs towards like tempo and rhythm and yeah. and stuff like that. So people are I think that there is a lot there there is some truth to this uh assumption where uh people think that Grookey will become a a grass drummer. Um which I would love but to see. I, I still, I still don't know. I still don't know. But it would be cool. I'm down for it either way. And we all know already that Score Bunny is going to be based on Cristiano Ronaldo, one of the most famous soccer players ever. So we don't have to go yeah. into that too much. But <laughs> yeah, 
Because but I did. It's actually funny you say that though too, because in that leak, because that leak posted like every every Pokemon that will be released in the Pokedex, um, the Riddler anyway, and there was a picture that had like a woman sitting on a moon or whatever, like from like a Japanese folklore or something. I think if anybody has watched uh, Kobu the Two Strings, Ooh, it's probably yeah. like closest to the the mother character or whomever the moon character isn't that i didn't watch all the movie i'm still like working my way through it's it. very good um yes i've i've heard and i just started it at like too late of a time and was falling asleep while watching it and i haven't picked it up since um so i could actually see like we get this moon bunny character which isn't which is isn't also too far-fetched in world in world lore either because of like moon rabbits i think being a, a, a japanese thing uh back forever ago um, yeah and with the white fur i can actually see that as well um and we can possibly see a fire fairy type that would be very cool i'd be very uh welcome to see um fairy kind of come into the starter line because I love the fairy type because I'm I'm a huge fan of mythos and and adding that fairy type in made me very very happy. As well, I'd love to see kind of a um, I'd love to see them go in a, in a better direction with it. Then I mean I liked Sun and Moon honestly I did, but the Fire Dark I think that was what um, uh, Litten was. Yeah, Litten yep, didn't Litten became Fire Dark. Litten didn't feel like a Fire Dark type. It still felt like a fire fighting, and so it felt like they were still sitting on that um version while while delphox really felt like a fire psychic type lit yeah uh, um yeah incineroar didn't feel like a fire dark it still felt like a fire fighting and i think it's just they know what works and i think they just gave it a different typing but a similar design just to make it work a little better yeah and like and i i, I would love to see them do more experimenting with um their different starters and really show show up some very good, very different experimentation because experimentation is what gains, what garners playability in in the Pokemon games especially. I agree. I agree with that. Um, yeah, Incineroar felt like it could basically have had three types, but it could have gone either way. Um, like I get what they were trying to do, and they did a really good job at executing it. Uh, was that it was this like wrestler who would play dirty? Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of what their their theming was with Incineroar, and I get it, but it does also feel very out of left field from where Litten starts. Yes. Like there's no there's no progression in that when when you go from Litten to uh Toracat and into Incineroar. Whereas if you go back to Delphox and Fennekin and, and Brixen, or yeah, Brixen, um gradually they become more of a wizard. Yes. Uh like that RPG trope, which is really cool. Um You know, like and, and then Embor or Pig Tepig to Embor even at, gains that like sort of sumo esque fighting a ch Chinese fighting style or look to it as it goes on. Uh, Infernape definitely starts to get that as it goes on from Chimcharta. So, so seeing that Litten goes to being like this, this like regular house cat to a a tiger esque thing to a now luchador wrestler. It feels it feels like very there was no like it, it almost feels like there was no real direction. It felt rushed. When it came to yeah yeah. It felt like they were like, well, we want to do this, but, like, I don't know how to do it, so we're going to do this anyway. Yeah. Um, whereas, like, if you look at uh, Poplio to Pre-Marina, and, and even even to a certain extent, uh, Rowlet to Decidueye, uh, Poplio has a very clear line of evolution going from this little clown, baby clown seal to this uh clown siren i guess yeah um and it, it, it but it's very distinct you see it progress into that and it's very easy to see where it comes from and i think they were just trying to capitalize on the firefighting success and i think they've been doing that for a while now i think x and y was the first one where they really kind of went out of that boundary and they made a very good leap with with right. um uh, uh fennekin to 
two breaks in Del Fox mm-hmm. versus the break between because like Litten and Toracat look like they could yeah like Litten to Toracat yeah that makes yeah, sense that's a natural evolution and then Toracat to to Incineroar just felt like I said rushed it felt Feels forced off. it felt like it was pushed out versus yeah. thought out yeah it does it really does um. I would have, I honestly would have been very happy if, if, and I, I, and I kind of hate that the, all the fire type starters kind of do this is that, uh, they all end up biped. There is not a single fire starter that is quadruped at the end of its final evolution line. Uh, the closest one we have is Typhlosion, but it's not even fully quadruped. It's like both, but its legs are too short on, on its bottom to actually like run uh run with four legs or to yeah. run with two legs but it stands on two legs and i kind of don't like that I, it, it, like really it really bothers me that every fire type starter just ends up becoming bipedal like i was really hoping back with when Tepeg came out in gen 5 that we were going to get this really giant quadruped boar that was that was fire and ground type you know, I was really hoping for something like that. Yeah. And it had like giant tusks and like this this sort of like wild boar thing. Um, we got Embor, which is Embor is still cool. Don't get me wrong, I love Embor. Tepig was actually my starter. Embor's a tank, uh, by the way. He was like, fuck. Exactly, and I I just yeah. I really like Embor because they made it its own. It they changed up the way that firefighting worked because Blaziken and Infernape do very similar things. Blaziken does it better because it has that hidden ability speed boost. Uh, when they finally introduce hidden abilities, um, but Infernape is still, I, in my opinion, I think the better designed of the two, uh, and probably out of all the fire fighting starters, or at least those that seem like they're themed around fighting, I think Infernape is the best designed out of all of them. I think I think Blaziken's design was just a bit lackluster. It felt very, it felt very jujitsu karate style. And it, it didn't feel bit where where Infernape really felt like it was thought out and and thought about and really put into a practice. Whereas right. if you're gonna talk shit about like Typhlosion, I'm gonna have to fight you. Oh, I w- I'm not talking. I'm not talking because it's my about favorite. Typhlosion. I like Typhlosion. Just go, you better like step off. <laughs> no, no. Just get no, real like, hostile no, real quick. No, no, no. Here's the thing, yeah. though. Like I. Don't get me wrong. Cyndaquil is probably my favorite starter. In Cyndaquil, Jordan. don't listen to him. He's I just love, lying. It's okay. I have my I Cyndaquil, love Cyndaquil doll. I with love me. Quilava. I I remember being younger and kind of ragging on why, like I was wondering, like why does Quilava have a mohawk? And then I got older and I'm like, because it's badass. And I'm like, cool. And then I and I love Typhlosion, but I do kind of think it's a not not necessarily a downgrade, but I think it they could have made too much to. Imp- where like I think really they they them. they made a bit they made a bit of a bad decision with with both Feraligatr and Typhlosion I think in their final designs Feraligatr looks cool but Feraligatr has the same issue that Dragonite has where where it just looks derpy yes and then Typhlosion has the issue of looking Edge Lord esque a little bit and a little bit like the fire ring around the neck is is a little Edge Lordy but I think. I think in in this front, a, a lot of a lot of um, like grunge style, emo style, very scene style music has actually come out of England, and I and I think I would love to see the theme of the theme of themes. That sounds very redundant, but the theme of themes, especially with the starters, can be very well made because three big things in in Britain are one. Like music with Grookey to uh, football with um, Score Bunny, and then on the final end, you have some sort of naval or swimming because for the longest time, Britain was the most powerful navy in the world. Mm. And you, I, I could definitely see um, Sabal coming into kind of a, a very defensive, forceful um, water type. I would be very happy to see water fighting get get a little bit of attention because I think that could work very well just as a, as a typing now competitive wise. No, but I think story wise, actually, yes. Like Sobble's this 
Sable's almost like a My Hero Academia success story, going from yeah. Deku being like <laughs> nobody to to learning from learning from All Might. I mean, it could come from being a tiny little thing that that can barely fight to being this big buff, hardcore fighter, and being able to really do. I would love to see the water type starter be the fast sweeper because we've never really seen that before. Water type's always been defensive. Yeah, every water type has been slower than the rest. Yeah. Um, I think there may have been an exception at one point. No, there hasn't. No. Every single water. The- the closest one is for alligator, but only on the basis that for alligator can learn dragon dance. And it's only because you you'd have to also EV train your for alligator to even be fast. Besides fast. that, base exactly. base wise, it's it's still definitely slower than Typhlosion and sits only a little bit higher above Meganium. Yep. And so it just kind of yeah. I'd love to see because with this grass type, at least we see it looks nimble at least on the leak that's that's showing up on the screen for what could be potentially based on a harlequin style character yeah and then i think for me with that leak by the way sorry to cut you go ahead but like the thing with that leak uh as much as people are like already saying it's fake and i'm i have my doubts about it too and i just i just like the theming of it and the way they went with it um i see those designs working in the anime hardcore yeah oh yeah like i literally see ash use either ash using uh using the the final evolution of grookey or or someone using that that pokemon similar to how greninja was used in the x and y anime yeah and he's just like this really nimble flippy like overconfident pokemon that uses leaf blade very frequently uh maybe even wood hammer to an extent and just like does all these really cool things and I'm just like, I see it. I literally see like these these really confident, swift moves coming from this Pokemon. And then also with with Sobble's nightly one, I I really see like this really bulky tank that just that sits there and you can't really get anything off of it. Yeah. Uh, and, and then uh, and then like with uh um Score Bunnies like being this really fast Pokemon as well. Maybe not as like flippy and de- dexterous, but like it's fast and strong. I see it being a very because. You know? Because even with the um with with the leak you've put up for Score Bunny, well not you put up, but that you sent me that was put up on yeah. there, I see the um like the the fur around the the uh, thigh of the legs mm-hmm. is is very very pushed out and and especially rabbits themselves don't have very bushy fur unless they have a lot of muscle, and so yeah. if they have that bushy fur, that means there are some leg muscles, but the arms are really small so i feel like it'd be a very kicky oriented pokemon and i would love to see a, a new fire move come out and be a uh, fire kick mm-hmm. or like something something along yeah, those lines because we have blaze kick right like yeah. we have blaze kick but like there's definitely more potential they can do with the fire type stuff and i i think they're gonna play with um because in the last generation uh, or in the past couple generations, actually, each of the starters have been starting out with a with a an elemental move, um, and I can see that like in this one in particular, we might get some like starter signature moves right out the gate, uh, and something even as simple as like Score Bunny running like like a hot foot or whatever. Uh, I could and, see that and, like, replacing like the the Z move mechanic where it's it's a it's a it's a move that the even on that on the topic we talked about the other night where it talks about like having the five move spectrum. We talked about that. It could be like a signature move to certain Pokemon. They have their four regulars yeah. and their signature. They even did a little bit with um, uh, Let's Go Eevee, Let's Go Pikachu, where your starter had this mm. special move you could do if you shook the the Joy-Con. Yeah, like the Pika Pow Pow and the EVV, uh, or the VV Volley. Yeah. yeah, those are the two. And I could, see, I could see definitely having like a signature move. I mean, I could see it right now. Like I could see Grookey's, especially in the in the Harlequin esque or the the musical esque one being something that's deri- derived with a soliloquy or some sort of monologue or music style, where it's either like a um, because yeah. with with rapiers especially um, the the thing the sword stick that this um, Grookey maybe final evolution is holding is very akin to a rapier. It doesn't have yeah. it doesn't have the because rapiers usually have that one hand guard and then it has the 
over guard that is a umbrella guard, but mm-hmm. it could be, you know, rapier can be made of anything. They're just a thin sword that can also be technically used as a baton because they're thin enough. They're just long. Mm-hmm. I could see it being a very musical number where score bunnies final evolution can be more of a, um, kind of a fast paced kick, almost like Liu Kang's bicycle kick from mortal Kombat. Yeah. And then Sobble's final could either be a big smash or like a hard hitting or like having a boosted defense. That's defense is boosted by like three points instead of the highest of two. And that would really, mm-hmm. like, put in that kind of competitive, forceful element to the story. Right. Because I think we don't need to really, for for these at least for now, I don't think we really need to focus on competitive. Because I could talk about competitive for hours about what I think that could be done, but I don't want to. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's like an entirely different video. <laughs> yeah, that's that's an entire different area of expertise we don't need to go into. And I'd have to get somebody like... I mean, more versed and even more versed in, in competitive than myself to kind of yeah, bounce stuff exactly. off of. But I, I think, like, and, and even to go off of that, they do do, like, the signature moves based off of, like, these uh, fa- uh, concepts, we'll say. We'll say for that for right now. Well, I'll call them concepts. Yeah. Uh, with the, the Harlequin-esque one, I can see it even being, like, they're stronger versions of moves that kind of already exist. Kind of like Z-moves, but, like, it would be, like, a giant leaf blade. Like, uh, Harlequin, the Harlequin one, or Grookey's Final Evolution, like, jumps up and, like, the, like, a giant grass energy, like, kind of like Solar Blade, like, just emanates from, from this rapier, and he slices down from, like, the heavens and a giant leap or whatever. I could see it being uh, akin to, did you ever watch Dragon Ball Super? I don't know if you have. I haven't watched Super, no, but I am familiar with, with Dragon Ball. I could see it as uh, being, still. uh, the Trunks versus Zamasu fight, which doesn't give you much away, don't worry about it. But it could be a similar sword blade to that, where, um... Trunks goes into, so basically when Goku and Vegeta are in Super Saiyan God, Trunks can't go to Super Saiyan God, but he can get God Key, and he uses that Mm -hmm. on his sword and uses the sword to kind of come down and be a big chop. Something like that, or something like the Vegito sword, or even I could see Grookey going into more the Naruto spectrum of being like Yamato from Naruto doing kind of a wood style thing because i think they need yeah. to use with grass types i think they need to use wood more because they always put a emphasis on the grass element but they never put enough emphasis on the wood like element leaves and stuff but nothing enough yeah. yeah the only wood move that we have there are two wood moves that we basically have and that's wood hammer yeah and frenzy plant frenzy plant aesthetically has always looked like thorns that come out like tree trunk thorns and roots that come out of the ground and kind of just like impale you. them bitches hurt um yeah. Anyway, like my favorite usage of Frenzy Plant, I think, is in the X and Y anime, like Mega Septile versus Ash Greninja. If anybody has not watched the X and Y anime and leading up to and all of X, Y, and Z anime, I fully recommend it if you want to see Pokemon go hardcore with combat and like Naruto esque fighting. If styles. you want to see, it's so it's, hype. I will. I will tell you to drudge through about fifty episodes of Friendship toting which is what i call it but yeah. after that i mean i got through all 49 episodes and i like the first 49 and i was like oh my god i gotta get through this and i watched episode 50 and i was just blown the fuck away because when yeah. it's just it's not even greninja it's um frogadier frogadier's movements yeah. and everything just look fluid and you get to see i mean halucha's flu movements are fluid and you get to see Pikachu just the battle and Ash. System in general, like yeah. the way they did the battle animations, are so stunning in that series. And if you haven't watched Pokemon Origins, what the fuck's wrong with you? Anyways, yeah. <laughs> and, and even even more so, if you haven't watched the Pokemon Black and White Two trailer, what are you doing? Go watch those yeah. trailers. They're like two minutes, but it's like exactly what we've always wanted Pokemon to be. Yeah, it's amazing. And I'd love to see in this, I'd love to see them put um, a bigger emphasis on the fighting because even with games like games like Final Fantasy, if you look at Final Fantasy 7 versus Final mm-hmm. Fantasy, we'll say 10, the, the fighting just kind of, you can notice there's more emphasis put on the fighting in 7 than there is in 10, I think, is the one that I'm thinking of. 
Ten is the guy. Who, I don't know how much of Final Fantasy you've played. Right, I've I've played a couple, and I'm I'm familiar with some with, with some of the ones. Ten is the one with the the um, big guy with the afro, the big black guy with the afro, right? Or am I getting that wrong? That might be a different one, uh, unless I'm not familiar enough with Final Here, Fantasy. Give me just Final one. Fantasy Ten has Titus in it with give the water like sword, and Waka has like the ball that he throws. Yeah, just give me one second. Hold on. Um, yeah, no worries. I'm calling my resident Final Fantasy expert. <laughs> <laughs> also, why did I do that? Come on, dude, pick up, please, Chan. <clears throat> Chan, come on. You douche nozzle. That's all right. All right, hold on. I'm gonna scream out to my. Always added in post later. Yeah, I'm gonna scream out to my roommate. Hold on, because I have two people who know Final Fantasy better than I do. I'll be right back. It'll take me like two seconds. Yep. God, big black guy with an afro. Final Fantasy. Do you remember what game it was in? Thirteen. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Thirteen. So Final Fantasy Thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> is the one I'm thinking of. So that's the wrong one. Um yeah. anyways, I know I remember I remember at least fucking Dane, your feet are so big but so small. Anyways, I'm not going over everything. But um I'm just remembering a a Final Fantasy game where I know 7, I didn't play enough of 7 to really get a a, a feel for it. But yeah. I know I played 10 and I played 13 and I know that in those that that combat wasn't really focused on as much as I thought. It should have been. Yeah. And I noticed that with um, Sun and Moon, the combat was – it was cool, but it didn't have that that pull in that I, that I really wanted to see, that, that feeling that I really wanted to feel from that kind of era of, of the, the game itself. Right. I really wanted to see it pull in more into the combat spectrum because a lot of the – Pokemon, at least the anime especially, is is focused on that battling. The ki- characters are kind of a background, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, and like to go to go again into Sun and Moon, it's like Sun and Moon basically their combat system was use your Z moves. Just use your Z moves and you will win. Yeah. And that's really kind of it. It's like you just you have to rely on them a lot. And unless you're just purposely not using them, they're like the game is difficult if you don't use them. But they're also not impossible to do without them. You know, like they don't really incorporate the Z moves into the game as much as as they could have. They just have them there as a power move that you can just knock out. If you like need a quick solution to kind of just defeat a Pokemon, you use your Z move and you're kind of done. Well, I, f- I found myself um, using the Z moves just to get through a lot of the game, which I don't feel like was a was was a lot of what they intended the Z moves to be, and I think that's what they no. be- they came into was just okay. I don't want to fight these grunts. Z move them, and yeah. then you're done. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, I feel like Z moves could have been there, there's a ways that a way that they could probably improve Z moves in in like single player where like they have charges on them like y- you can only use them x amount of time to- like x amount of time like they have their own power points right yeah so they would have their power points and then when you use them up they go on a timer so then in order to recharge up to full yeah to, and I- to get them back so like you have to wait like another two or three hours actively in game in order for it to use your uh, your Z move again, I'd love to see something like that because I want I want to see them put more emphasis on the um because there's a lot of emphasis on strategy in competitive, but there's not enough emphasis I think on strategy in main game. I especially saw this with um Sun and Moon where I could uh, honestly going after playing through all the other games, especially playing through. The Jims and Johto. The Jims and Johto, especially just fighting Faulkner in that first bird gym, that was difficult if you were not prepared. You yeah, weren't ready. Faulkner you would get 
your shit rocked real easily. And I saw the same thing with the um, not the dra- the flying type dragon flying type gym that was in Fortress City. In oh yeah, uh, Pokemon in Hoenn. Yeah, in Hoenn, that was the same thing. You had to you had to know what was going on there, or else you didn't you didn't do well. Yeah, and, it took me forever to get past Winona yeah. growing up because I, I just wasn't prepped for it. I was also the kid back in the day that only trained his starter, which is what I think everybody does at least at one point yeah, in their life. Yeah. And and I had Blaziken, so like I was we I had a weakness to flying type. Yes. The only thing I could really do anything to was Skarmory, and that's because I had a fire type move with Blaze Kick. Yeah. And I, I think they, they they've moved from doing that style of, of <laughs> battle and they they x and y i think did it fast where they the gyms weren't super challenging but if you didn't go in with a bit of training you probably wouldn't have done as well you could still beat them but it would be a challenge where i want yeah i want sword and shield to to be challenging because again you are i know it's a kid's game but you are fighting people who have trained their teams to specifically fight in this gym yeah and especially when you get text of like only this many people have beaten this gym and then you beat them in like you know three minutes you're like okay apparently they're just bad trainers i don't want to i don't want to feel like i'm being handed it unless we use the theory that yeah. we talked about with the the rich um yeah exactly the rich um uh neighbor who's kind of making the the gym's easier for you and either your rival or you notice that and they exactly they just kind of go into that and i think we should we should probably explain that (laughs) theory yeah so so uh i guess i'll go into it because i kind of like had some some depth you had it better than i did yes yeah so essentially um when you look at the gala region map because this is kind of where we're all this is all stemming from anyway yeah uh when you look at the gala region map uh your starting town uh you see where your house is as the player character it's like this small cottage on the bottom left of the map and then across the path a little bit there is a bigger house that has a pokemon field like in the front lawn and it's just like a really big nice house whereas yours house looks like a rundown shack or my house if that house yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly um or if it, it if so if that house to the right is your rival's house um i i'm pretty confident in saying that your rival is rich and we might see the return of a jerk rival uh and then on top of that um the rival's parent is this really wealthy person but because they're a shady businessman or businesswoman whomever and uh they are the leader of the evil team and yeah. it's like this I think it would be really cool for these RPG elements because you get a really dramatic story with that too. Uh like to see how the the boss plays into your character, like they they like buy certain things for you, like, oh, I'm gonna buy you your set first set of Pokeballs because you, you don't have any money. Uh and I'm gonna buy you like a potion or something too, because I, I wanna help you out on your journey. You deserve to have a fair shot at this. Uh, like they're just really nice to you and your family and then come to find out that they're actually like they have really evil intentions for the rest of the region and it's really corrupt. And they're they're and that's kind of what we're going with. They're that. attempting to manipulate you to kind of see their side of it. Yeah. To to manipulate you to reach their your your means to their end. Yeah. Like you like that that that's what the idea is, I think, with the evil leader being Which rich and the father of the rival i thought about this after it and i was actually thinking about the movie um not the movie the book um lord of the flies in that in that way because it doesn't sit in the same vein but the the big red-headed choir boy character was very very similar to that where he had his own ideas but he used a lot of the other main characters to get to his his end and and I think we can see yes. maybe not as brutal as he used, but similar in the vein of that, where where it's allowing you know trying to gain the trust of 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 the player character mm-hmm. while trying to maintain their own agenda, and I think that could that could add for a very good um, stylized uh, drama centric story, right. 
See, I, I think I think a lot of this, uh, a lot of Sword and Shield right now has a lot of potential to almost mirror what what Black and White did um, with a lot of its stuff. Like a lot of the things that it seems like we're asked that we that we want have taken place in a previous Pokemon game before in Black and White, where we had like challenging gyms. Like the gym leaders are really kind of difficult if you're not prepared for them. Yeah, in, in Black and White, you're gonna get your socks rocked in the striatin gym if you don't train up that that uh the, the the elemental monkey that you get uh you're unless you're prepared for retaliate against lenora you're gonna get your socks rocked berg is kind of easier but still that dwebble is no joke yeah and then uh Alyssa has the volt switch technique like it, it, the list just goes on with black and white is that they they know how to use their pokemon and i think like on top of that like we they and then black and white has the really dark story where where Getsis is manipulating characters across the region and making you the player and even like other NPCs question whether or not what they're doing with Pokemon is even morally correct and morally good. Um, so I think we might see stuff like that play out here. I think there's potential there to reflect a lot of that stuff with what we've seen so far. Um, yeah, because in my opinion, black and white is where the series has peaked in terms of an RPG. I think so as well. I think they did well as an introductory, especially with X and Y. I think. Mm -hmm. Where were we? Um, we were talking about. I mentioned how black and white. I feel like has a lot it was like the be at the best in the series. Like yeah, you know, yes. Like was it the, where it peaked yes. and you were talk going to go on about X and Y. I think X and Y. I think X and Y made a good jump in a good direction about making it kind of be an RPG, but they still kind of fell short. Where X and Y and not Black and White and Black Two and White Two especially hit that nail right on the head. They really hit mm -hmm. that nail good and hard and fast, and they made sure that it felt the way it was supposed to feel. And I think we just didn't see that from Sun and Moon, where I'm hoping we can see something akin to that in, in Sword and Shield. Which from from what we can we've heard from speculation already, and even some like rumors that are going around, it seems like we might get a darker story, or at least a, a more involved story. Yeah. Um, which leads to a really good single player experience, in that there are like, almost like factions if, in in the region of Galar, yeah. like between two party, uh, two houses, and then all of the other gyms are like Slytherin and Gryffindor siding with these two. Yeah. yeah. Kind yeah. of that same. That's kind of a joke, kind of not, but like a Slytherin Gryffindor housing is really a good, a good way. If if you're ever even trying to write a story, kind of look at that as your kind of, especially in the book sense, look at that as your oh yeah um, reference for writing a feud story because that is one of the best um, poli political feud stories ever written mm -hmm. because it just goes into like Lucius Malfoy kind of working very behind the scenes. And Dumbledore, who was a Gryffindor, knowing about it, and then Harry and Draco kind of also having their kind of hit on there as well. It just did very, very mm. good to talk about exactly what was going on, and I'd really like to see something come out of that into uh, Sword and Shield, kind of a more, like you said, a mm -hmm. feud, kind of a, um, a two factions kind of fighting about something it doesn't have to you know we the character doesn't have to know it right away but the character can learn about it because sun yeah. and moon felt very sidelined the main character felt yes. very sidelined you and how just felt like you were at the side and that was it yeah it's i don't know sun and moon it's weird because every time i play sun and moon or i at least talk about it um i i always describe it as one way and it's that it's a tour of alola yeah it's not a journey through Alola, it's a tour of Alola. Because at every two steps you take, you're being stopped and pointed in a direction to go. Because, hey, look at this cool thing. Hey, look at this cool thing. And that's something I'm really hoping that they don't do in Sword and Shield. Because from what we see with the region, it looks like it's a really big place to explore. Yeah. And I hope that we're not blocked and handheld through... Hey, come this way. Hey, come on this way. Look at this cool thing. You see this cool thing? It's like, no, let me just 
go and check it out myself. Let me get there uh, to this, like, to the city, that big, like, uh, industrial city, and be blown away at the scale and get lost for yeah. a minute. And, like, know that I will find my way through eventually, but let me just do what I want to do. They did it with Castelia City in black and white. And then in X and Y's Lumio City, they kind of took that away from us. Yes, they, they definitely and, did. And, I, I think there were some very good ideas put into X and Y. I think they they made good decisions in X and Y and good decisions in Sun and Moon. And then they made fundamentally bad decisions in both those games, especially with kind of the hand-holding in Sun and Moon and the railroading in X and Y really forcing you to go this certain way. Yeah. I would love to see more being able to challenge any gym you want at any time you want because like i mean mm -hmm. hell you do that and you don't see it in indigo league per se but you see it really good in the johto league anime he just kind of passes up faulkner and cherry grove city and goes straight to the second gym first and yeah. it's fine and i'd love to see something come out that's that's more in that vein versus it being mm -hmm. very just you have to go to this gym, this gym, this gym, do these in this order, and if you don't do them in this order, you're doing it wrong. Whereas, <clears throat> like in Legend of Zelda, the first Legend of Zelda, you go to the 8th dungeon right away. Yeah, you die, but you can go. <laughs> you can also easily. beat it if you're really good. <coughs> if you're really good, you can beat it. Yeah, and, but you have to be and, good. Like, good You have to be good. It. You have to know the game. Yeah. Um, and And... I don't necessarily Fuck mind a little, like, path to go, linear path. Like, I will admit, Black and White's biggest flaw probably in its, in its, uh, in its, in its design is that, that it's very railroaded as well. Like, you can't make progress unless you defeat this gym when you get to this spot and make this plot line progression, this plot, like... But there are periods of, like, a little bit of freedom, which is kind of nice. Like, you get into the town, you're stopped, and then you have freedom to do whatever you want in that town. Yeah. Um, You do initially, like, your plot point, and then you just kind of handle how you go about it at that time. Whereas, like, in Sun and Moon, you would be you would be brought into, the into like, Haoli City, like, in the first city that you're really brought into. You're brought in there. And you're stopped every couple of minutes along the path of that city. Is it cool to see the characters? Yeah, it's cool to see and interact with the characters. But it still leaves you with this this kind of dry experience of like, well, I want to go this way. But it won't let you. And they had a really cool opportunity too on Route 1. Where your house is smack dab between two route, two pathways of the same route. Yeah. But in the tutorial, they're they're forcing you to go down one way, and they're forcing you to go down another instead of just allowing you to go one way or the other. Yeah, and 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 it didn't feel like they they let you kind of live through your character. It felt very uh, railroady, especially like a railroad D and D campaign, which I know you and I both have probably been through. Yeah, and they're some of the worst yeah, exactly. D and D campaigns to go through because you don't feel like you can do anything. You are forced to talk to these certain NPCs, forced to talk to these certain people. And I felt the same way with Sun and Moon. It, it was the same feeling of I, I don't even want to play it because I'm bored, you know? Yeah. I feel like I, this might be a little bit of a stretch and or it might be an exaggeration, but I feel like since Black and White, Pokemon, the Pokemon Company and Game Freak have taken the worst parts of the games and expanded on those and made those key focuses of the of the following or the yeah the following game. I think they have so like actually I, I think so I like agree with the you plot on that in one. black and white yeah so like where the plot in black and white was was really strong and really good narratively they took a linear railroad structure m more so heavily and in, in implied into X and Y and they also kind of dropped its narrative strength a little bit right yeah and then they took like the handholdy sections of of X and Y and made them the key thing in Sun and Moon where and they made they kept on the story like they, they brought the story back a bit in Sun and Moon but it was almost in vain uh or really un unsatisfying because of the fact it was just it it didn't feel like it was your journey because you were just being pulled along on this little quest yeah it it, it felt very um it felt very kind of 
I'm going to go deep here. But it felt very like King's Quest 2-esque. Mm. King Quest, King's Quest 1 and King's Quest 2, if you've ever played those on DOS. Yeah, I've watched them, but yeah. It was very, very, you do this, 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 and this. And those are old 80s DOS games. And I mean, those are older games. Mm-hmm. But then we get into like <clears throat> X and Y and Sun and Moon, Sun and Moon especially. I felt like X and Y had a little bit of leeway, but again, it didn't have as much. But there, ha- there was more to do in lieu of the leeway whereas yeah. in sun and moon there was very little there the the wild patches like the wild grass patches were very very sparse i felt throughout sun and moon there wasn't oh, they enough are. there like hardly any and so you can't really build a team out of that you kind of build a team of what it gives you instead of yeah. like i mean i i got a pick a pack and i didn't want a pick a pack i didn't want that yeah. i wanted that the horse which i can't remember the name of and yeah. it took me so long to find that horse donkey ass pokemon i spent a good mm-hmm. hour and a half just trying to find one that was of an okay level and i couldn't mm-hmm. i could barely use it because everything was kind of tailored to this certain stretch of a team and it felt very you can't do what you want you do what we want right and i right. i would love to see them kind of take that out of there and kind of be like go nuts because i think again to your point black and white black two and white two really let you go nuts i mean there was they did the same thing they did in the previous games where right out of the gate you could go to a wild area before you even got pokeballs the first time and you, you had to go to the professor's lab especially in unova or seno you go right to the mm-hmm. but you get to see what's in that grass patch before you get the pokeballs you need you can always go mm-hmm. back and get them, but you know there's 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 always the issue of you don't get to see you don't get to see as much in Sun and Moon. It, it again feels like a, a tourist attraction versus it feeling like a, an adventure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, I, and even to like X and like I I know it might seem like too that I I don't give X and Y enough credit because there are sections of the game where you kind of can can bypass certain things. Uh, so when you get to the second gym area, like you can kind of bypass the second gym and go yeah, right into Geocent you Town. Can. They like they kind of let you just go all the way through there. Um, but if you really if you so want to, yeah. Um, and then come back later. But it almost doesn't make sense to do that because there's no easy way to get back to, uh, the I forget the name of the city, but the second the second gym. Shalor, right? Uh, area. Shalor City. Is that gym too? No, I think that one's like the fourth gym. Oh, I'm I don't not remember. Sure. Uh, I don't remember the cities yeah. in too much either. But talking on X and Y though too, um, the Gala region has the that that chalk giant statue, right? Yeah. And when I think back on it and I watch the trailer, I I keep being brought back to going to Anastar City and seeing the that giant crystal in in the middle of the of the psychic gym area. Yeah. Like when you go in the city and you're just like in the middle of the ocean, there's just this giant crystal formation and nobody knows where it came from or what it what it may, meant, you know. And, and so they missed, I think, that a, really gives me a lot of vibes of that. I think they missed a great opportunity in X and Y to be like, what is this? And then you get to find an archaeologist who's like, I have an idea, but I can't go to this cave. But you're a young traveler. Yeah. You can. And I think it's because mm-hmm. they put too much of an emphasis on this being a child. And it doesn't, mm-hmm. you know, you don't have to make someone who's like 24. You can make them like their, I mean, anime rules. They're like 15, but they, you know, I mean, hell, the guys in Naruto go through hellish, hellish, hellish things. They're supposed to be 12 and 13. Yeah. I mean, you can. And, and even so, yeah. like, I, I believe that the, like, black and white trainers are, like, in their early teens. Yeah. I think they're like 13, 14, you know? Like, something like, like that. Like I mentioned, I think Rosa, which is one of the, oh, God. Oh, yeah, right there. Yeah, okay, we're good. All right, nothing happened. <laughs> My screen just went dark for a second. I don't know why, but I think um, the thing they missed in uh, X and Y with that is they just didn't give enough emphasis on letting the character be a person. They made them be a kid, mm-hmm. and that's what really, really hit hard for me. Was I don't? I'm not a kid. 
Yeah. You know, I don't want to, even when you're, even when you're young like that, you don't want to be treated like a kid, especially if you're traveling yeah, you wanna... alone or with just a group of friends who are around your same age, you feel like an adult to go back to Lord of the Flies. They act like adults, even though they are children, there's no one around to help them. So they have to kind of grow up, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And it kind of shows to the point of these are children who can live this life. And this is a completely different world. The world's going to treat, as we've seen, the evil team or the bad guy team treats them like like a kid. But the regular people treat them like a person. And and it's that Mm -hmm. degrading feeling. Even your rival will treat you like a kid, especially in the first couple games. They treat you like a child, even though they're the same age. They just had a harder time of it than you did. And mm-hmm. so they grew up a little faster, and so I think they need to put an emphasis on growing up more in, in Sword and Shield versus emphasis on you're a child, we're going to show you around, but you're also going to do these great things. And it's just, it felt like they weren't picking a side. I've always felt that getting your starter Pokemon in, and like in the world of Pokemon, that getting your starter Pokemon is a rite of pa- it's a like a rite of passage and a sign of adulthood, almost like how uh, someone who is Jewish would have their bar mitzvah or bat mitzvah. Yeah, it's like their sign, their their coming of age. You know, getting your starter Pokemon is your coming of age beginning. So treating people like kids, or treating your trainers who are supposed to be now adults or be like men and women uh or or people of non-conforming genders because why go not? nuts um yeah. yeah um like they should be treated as such you know and that's why even in like the original games we see giovanni hold no bar against against red a 10 year old yeah you know he's like you're getting in my way I'm going to have to destroy you. All the grunts are like, I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to destroy you. And, and like, everybody kind of talks down to you like they're going to beat you. They're going to, like, they're kind of cocky and they're they're bullish in that sort of way. Uh, I mean, that, that can kind of come off across as, like, treating you like a kid as well. But they don't treat you like they're going to go easy on you, you know? Yeah. It doesn't seem like they're going to go easy on you. Where I, I would like to and, – and I think with, with – uh, Galar, we're, we're, or with a sword and shield, we're probably gonna see a little bit more of a mature side to our trainers a little bit, uh, because they look older. They do. I don't know if you, what you think is like they they look significantly older, um, and on top of that, like when I when I see the girl trainer walking out of the house and then going down the stairs, it feels jo- jovial. It feels like it's playful, but it doesn't feel like it's and obviously i'm just kind of gathering information but it doesn't feel like it's a kid going on an adventure yeah it feels like it's a youth uh, an excited youth that's about to face a journey that's probably gonna tear them down a lot well um, especially who's, in who's like to say i like really too anime and in indigo league you see you see ash at the beginning who's like a super hype happy child and mm. then immediately gets hit with what that wave of Spiro who almost technically kill Pikachu. Yeah. Because they yeah. because he's he's he, now he's in it. Now it's it's the wild the wild earth. Guess what? Get mm-hmm. fucked. Get ready. Shit's about to get real and it just keeps it's staying dangerous that out there. way. Yeah. And yeah, the characters no. of Misty and Brock don't actually help that. They're just kind of there because they like him. Not because they're helping, because they like who he is. Yeah, that and Ash owes Misty a bike. Yeah. Like three of them, actually. But, yeah. you know, semantics. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I, I, I'm, I think with, with, with everything we've been saying so far, ultimately, I think that Sword and Shield just has a lot of potential, and I'd yes. hate to see them throw it away. Like, with all the good stuff that they have, like, culturally and with the layout of the region, uh, with our starters, um, and with what Pokemon has done in its past, there's a lot that can be pulled from that's good that will leave for an amazing RPG experience. And I have a lot of confidence in that they're going to do that because uh, Junichi Masuda or or the other director who I can't remember his name right now, um, uh, Tajiri, I think maybe. Um, 
Satoshi Tajiri. Uh, yeah, I think Satoshi's yeah. uh, Tajiri or something like that. Um, one of the developers had said that they were focusing on making this a co- like an RPG experience. They put emphasis on yes, it. Yes, they did. And and that's something they've never done before. Yeah. They've never said like, <clears throat> oh, this is an RPG like experience or, or whatever. And on top of that, they've also said that they're trying to do new things. Yeah. Which, going back to our Final Fantasy talk too, I wonder if they're going to change the battle system even slightly to be more of a like final fantasy uh final fantasy 9 has like a real time battle system and like yeah. a yokai watch sort of battle system where it's like your enemies it's not necessary it's turn based but it's not like like you can't you have to you can disengage from it right you have to be engaged in the battle as it's going or else things are going to happen. Like, your opponent can potentially attack twice from you if their meter fills up faster before you make the selection. Yeah, and um, as well, I'd I like to see cool. them... At least in the solo game. Yeah, I'd like to see them as well do, like, something that kind of sits more in the, in the vein of, um, of like, um, oh, fuck, what's it called? Um, in the vein of um, a thing... Dude, fuck. Um, but more in the vein of like where you get to you get to a certain point and it kind of it kind of the, the the battle mode changes because let's say you know you go through the first gym in Sword and Shield you get through the first gym it's not too hard not too easy kind of just midi- middle of the road because that's kind of how the first gym always is it's not mm-hmm. always too hard not always too soft it just kind of gives you that here's what the game is like. And you can kind of even notice that from Viola's gym, where the gym wasn't hard. It was just, again, it railroaded you to play these trainers, whereas a lot of times before, you never you could skip the trainers if need be, but skipping the trainers is more mm-hmm. convoluted than just fighting them in Viola's gym. And then so you have right. to go through, right. you, know, you have to fight these, yeah, these like certain trainers, can, and you... then you have to go and hit these... Um, other gyms and they just don't they they get progressively a little more difficult but i think if we see that first gym kind of be a middle of the road not too hard not too easy and then once they go deeper into it the gyms become harder and harder and harder and you have to work harder and harder to hit more and more Mm -hmm. and then you have to take into account that this you know if there is that real-time battle sequence or there is a battle sequence that's more akin to something like an rpg where the Pokemon Coliseum elements, for instance, you could yell wake up to your Pokemon if they fell asleep. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't see why we can't do that. That was a very good mechanic. It didn't always work, of course, but you could try. And It it was it, nice. Yeah, it was nice as an option. Yeah, instead of having to just be like, well, I gotta switch this one out. That's it. Yeah, or I gotta use a Chesto Berry yeah. or, a, or an Awakening. Um, things like that. Um, and, and while we're on the topic of gyms too, we talked about this the last time, but I don't, as well as I, I, I don't think... want to sh- this to be missed out because I think this is a cool idea that I want more people to get excited about, uh, is that store, like, cause we talked about gyms, right? And we talked about story influence and how like in the anime, a gym battle can be interrupted and then they go back to the battle. Yeah. Uh, and I'd like to see something like that where. And it seems like it can be easily code a uh, program too, where you get past like the gym leaders, a gym the, like a, a gym leaders, a uh, couple of Pokemon, and they have like two left or one left, and all of a sudden it cuts away from the battle, and we get a cutscene, and the gym is being invaded. Yes, the gym leader is kidnapped, and you have to go crawling through the gym. Uh, battling different grunts to try and rescue the gym leader, and then when you ta- team up with the gym leader, you take on the the evil uh, whoever the admin is that was in charge of that raid, uh, defeat them. That team is now uh, kicked out of the gym and run and run out of town, and then you go back to your gym battle uh, with a one v one to finish it up and get your badge. Yeah. Like, something that's a little more interesting that shakes it up a little bit. So it kind of, like, surprises you a little bit. You're like, okay, we're going to go in. We're going to have an easy gym match. And then all of a sudden, in the middle of your gym match, you have to stop your battle and go do something else. And then you come back to finish it later. 
I think that would be cool. And as well, I'd like to see them do something that's – I'd like to see them change the name of the Grunts because I think Grunt has overstayed its welcome, the naming. I'd like to see them be yeah. called something like Associates or um, mm. make them a little smarter, make them a little more not these dunces that can't do anything because that just feels a little too annoying. Because I mean, with I mean personally, I'm in favor of Goon. Oh, I, I do like that's Goon. A good, good change. Goon is a good time. <laughs> well, that's the thing I wanted to say. I don't know why I forgot about this, but when you said "rock your socks," the only I want to <laughs> say the only time I've ever heard that saying was when I was in New York. I just wanted to mention that little bit, that little tidbit. There you go. And I found that there very funny. But a goon associate, something that isn't grunt, because it just feels like grunt's been overstayed. Yeah, I could see that. And it like member. Or yeah, and it's too. I, it, grunt just is. It makes me think of Halo, and it just makes me think of the easiest enemies in Halo, or something on akin to that the styling. I think I think grunts can stay as long as they're not the only versions of the of the the evil team that we see for a majority of the game. Yeah. Right? So, like, we make, like, the first couple of encounters, we might see grunts. And then, like, they've been, the grunts had been thwarted. So the, the evil, t excuse me, the evil team is now, like, well, the grunts can't handle this. So let's ha have some of our, like, uh, higher-ups do it. And they're not, like, they're, like, a step above grunt, you know? Yeah. And then maybe, like, after that, it's, like, an admin. And then, like, uh, a chairperson. And then, uh, finally, you get the big boss that's, like, I'm doing this because... None of you can do it. Yeah, and then it, once you beat the big boss, there's like this big thing where they are like, hey, how come you could beat me? I've been doing this longer than you. And then they can still put that emphasis on, I love my Pokemon, and you just use them as tools. And that still runs into the, the, the overarching theme of, of Pokemon, where it's, it's love over everything else. Yeah you know, friendship and love over anything else. And that really still sits in the theme where it can be dark, but you can still have that, that love and that friendship sitting in there with you. Yeah. Yeah. And like going on that too, if we have this rival is rich thing and the, they're rich and whatnot and the rivals like learns and grows like on that final encounter with the, with the, um, with the evil leader who's potentially their, their parent, they can be like, you only use Pokemon for financial gain. That's why you lost. So like something like a really deep, hard cutting line like that. Yeah. Like to really kind of get at their character. It's like, like dad or mom. This is yeah, why I, you lost. I like my Pokemon. They're my friends. And then, yeah. it, you know, once they, once the, the parent figure feels that the Pokemon have overstayed their welcome, you can see them coming up to the rival and be like, hey, you need to get rid of that one. It's not doing the work it's supposed to anymore. Get rid of it and get a new one. Yeah. And then we see that kind of yeah, and feud. like he has like they have all this characterization of their parent and then they slowly start to lose it as time goes on, you know? I think that'd be cool. I think it would be very very cool to see something like <gasps> that. I just want to see the I just want all these ideas to be true because they're so good. <laughs> like they're just so good. They're, I, I like really like the dynamic of this too, because and I'm gonna be really disappointed now that if, it, if it's not like this. <laughs> I, I am too, but I think I think we have to we have to understand they're probably gonna take, especially with with the internet being the way it is. If if they go too far out of their element, they might see an uptick of lost shares and and an uptick mm -hmm. of of hate coming through. Social media, just from mainly people who are like Gen 1ers who are happy with the yeah. way it was and want it to stay the same versus those who are like you and I who are welcoming change, actually wanting to welcome change with open arms because I want to see that change. I want to see it be something new. It's funny you mentioned the Gen, like Gen 1ers though too like because – yeah, they, they like their Pokemon, like their original Red and Blue and like their Kanto Pokemon and stuff and their Kanto region and Team Rocket and such like that. But a lot of the people who don't play anymore who are like quote unquote Gen 1ers, they don't like poke the other Pokemon games because they feel the same. Yes. You know, they just feel the same. Like all it's like it's never a new experience. It's like, oh, it's like the same thing. You go get your eight gym badges and blah and you become champion. Like 
yeah, that's always going to be the formula, but I think there are ways that it can be twisted up and not feel so formulaic. Like with an introduction, like an interrupted gym battle or something like that, uh, with like quest lines that you have to do, maybe go adventure around and focus on a cool aspect of the story and change up the battle mechanics in the single player to be like more of a real time, uh, real time RPG, uh, a turn based RPG, um, something like that. And I think that would be, I think they would benefit from that experience because you can still get like the traditional, I think it's they if they leave the multi the the, the wi-fi battling untouched right like yeah. leave it where it is because it's practically perfect where it is just update the servers you know make sure that they're very stable um and and make sure that it's actually easy and not convoluted to connect with the people you want to battle yeah. with let's go's like i like the I, I like the concept of let's go's like code i think it's cute but it's not good for matchmaking at all, uh, or for, or for trading for that matter. The festival plaza's gotta go. Yeah. The best way that they've had mo- they've had online, in my opinion, is the PSS. They had a really good system with the PSS, and then I also really like union rooms. I was really into union rooms back in the day. Yeah. I thought it was fun. I like to see something that's more like a um that's that's akin to the lobby that they had in um. And I think it was Sun and Moon, actually. They had that, like, uh, Wi-Fi lobby you could go into. And you'd go play mini games, or you'd go battle or go trade. And you just saw different player yeah. characters kind of floating in that space. And if yeah. they were pulled into a battle, they wouldn't be in the floating lobby space. But you could also just talk yeah. to them. But I'd like to I'd like to see them do more with the um, the headset capability that, ha- that the Switch mm. has now. And you can play multiplayer games. And you can have multiplayer battles where you talk to the person on, on the side because I think the biggest thing is people get very competitive in the Pokemon games because they just don't have the the want to get into the the skim, the semantics of the game. And you could find, like, I've yeah. found friends by just going on the PSS, finding someone's name, finding out what their name was, learning who they were, and finding them online. And I became friends with them through just Pokemon X and Y, especially through the PSS. Yeah. Because you know what state yeah. they're in. I mean, it doesn't tell them much, but it gives it gives enough to know, hey, this person, like I fought four or five people from Ohio when I was in college, and I found out two of them went to the same college I went to, and we all went out and had dinner and talked about the battles we had that weren't with the other people. Yeah, and that's cool. it was very fun because it was just kind of this, I got to talk to someone who I would battled and I knew them, I knew how they played, and... It it really gives way to the, the 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 saying you don't know someone until you fight them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you can kind of see and if they get brutal or they get nice. You can see who their personality is through that. Especially if they grew up their mm-hmm. whole life playing it. That that makes sense. You're like, oh, I get that. That that works. Right. I think they need to make the online accessible. And when I say that. I think that the as mu- as cool as a concept the Festival Plaza and Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Moon is, I feel like it's very complicated and convoluted to try to set up a match or to set up a trade or something like yeah. that. Because that's why I didn't even really use it very much. And that's why I kind of dropped out of Wi-Fi battling because I didn't know how to match make. It was very kind of like... And I didn't care to learn it either because it just wasn't simple. It was It was very... It was a step backward from the PSS, which had a very streamlined, hey, it's on your bottom screen, uh, you look and see who's online, oh, your friend is online, or like if you are you already scheduled a battle outside of it, you just click on their name, do battle, and boom, you're in the battle. You're doing whatever, you're setting up your rules for the battle yeah. and whatnot. Whereas in the Festival Plaza, it's like, okay, I have to go to the Festival Plaza, I have to go find them, I have to go, like, look through my friends list, see if it's even working or whatnot, I have to go through, jump through hoops to do yeah. it, you can't just immediately do it either, the first time you go into the Festival Plaza, you have to do a tutorial, you know, of the, about the Festival Plaza, there's just, like, some things about it that I'm just like, it's not a step in a good direction, it's not, and, yeah, and- I think that having an easy online communication button in the menu of like your bag or whatever of your like menu your pause screen i think would be better than going into the festival mm. plaza or something like and that the nice thing with the pss too is if you just want to sit down for like an hour and you don't really want to get online or on wi-fi you don't have to turn it on 
just leave it off yeah. and then you're good. But for the Festival Plaza, you have to spend that hour if you want to get online just spend basically that hour connecting and getting ready, and then by the time you're ready to do a battle, you don't have time. Exactly. And I exactly I always felt that way when I'd be in in my in my apartment. I'd be like, all right, I got like two hours before I have to go to work. I want to do one quick Pokemon battle, and then I would find myself going on to Smogon, playing battles there, waiting for mm-hmm. the um the Festival Plaza to actually work right. Yes. And it just felt absolutely it didn't feel like it it, it felt it didn't feel streamlined. It felt like it was a console based Wi Fi because it was so there was so much to do in it, but it was on a handheld which had a weaker Wi Fi enabler. Whereas if they go to mm-hmm. console it's it's always connected to the internet, so you can just go for it whenever you need. Yeah, your switch is constantly like can be constantly connected to the internet, which is great. Um, yeah, and it doesn't really pull anything from it, which is nice. Um, I'm just really wondering what how like at this point I want more information. That's just really what it, yeah. what it is. I want to see like a little bit more. I have my tease of it, and now I'm I and I think myself along with the rest of the community is just like hungry for more, and we are so excited and so eager for for late. 2019 to arrive because then we'll have pokemon sword and shield in our hands a new generation of pokemon new friends to make uh new adventures to go on uh and and new experiences to have all together and i want to see really looking forward to something like that i want to see finally i want to see in a pokemon game have an actual this is going to sound a little odd right away but i want to see a love interest happen because you mm. see with a lot of rpgs especially the elder scrolls series there's that you know the, the amulet of mara you can marry someone now, it doesn't have to be that ex- right. that you know extreme, but it can just be you have this character that's wanting to spend more time with your character than it is with its than they are with their group of friends, mm-hmm. and it's just like there's this very simple. It's simple, but it's this very hey, there's this character I really like, and they're really cool, and you can either pick if it's a boy or a girl. You don't have to make it if you're a boy. It doesn't have to be a girl. If you're a girl, it doesn't have to be a boy. But it's just this yeah. very specific love interest kind of it, it's not heavy it's not heavy handed or anything it's like it's like instead I, and i think they'd probably go along the route of this is my best friend like this is my really good friend yeah. instead of like my significant other sort of say um and i and i like that i like that a lot uh i feel like they kind of alluded that they wanted to do something like that in x and y with the character of shauna yeah because you go to the 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 one palace place and watch fireworks with her and if you play as the boy character she's kind of like talking a little romance stuff about yeah. it like very like she's like isn't it romantic a little bit and it's like really cute um and it's something i really and, i really like, wanted to see more of i wanted to see more yeah. character interaction like that versus the static we're friends and we battle pokemon yay yeah I'd almost, I'd almost really like to see a character like that that shows up every once in a while. Like you, hunt, you meet them and they're really cool and they're like, hey, let's have a battle. And then the next time you meet them and it's like, all right, if I win this battle, you get to take me out on a date, or you get to fall, you have to fall in love with me, or something like that. Like really kidding. Yeah, or you way. have to, we have to go get uh, lunch at blank cafe and you have to pay for it. And it's just. Yeah. utilize the things around because i noticed always in the cafes you just bought food and then you They're said you ate it but then you leave and it's like i don't get to see the interaction i want to make i want to make a bit of a conversation it doesn't have to be a lot but it can just be quick you know three question conversation and then the more and more you go to a cafe with you know x y or z player mm-hmm. the more you understand them the more you learn about them and you get to kind of go do more things with them and it's it's a right. friend you make instead of a friend you're given exactly exactly like i i want i'd like to be able to develop my relationship with people and i think that's something that we also talked about last time too is that we want consequences to our actions yes. and and branching not like a like incredibly wide branching paths but Enough that it's like, well, your decisions do make an impact on how thing, how people will treat you, and ultimately, probably how your end game is going to be. 
uh, and you're still going to get to the same route. You're still going to be, okay, you're still going to challenge all eight gym leaders or gym masters, according to the Nintendo spill yeah. uh, leak that they, they had. Uh, so all eight gym masters, and then you become the champion, or you fight to become the champion. But the difficulty of that would change depending on how you treat other people and what you decide to do and not to do. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely would. Let you be able to lose a battle, as you said in the last discussion. Yeah, lo- instead of having fighting your rival and just whenever you lose, you have to go and fight them until you win, it's more of you lose and you've lost and that's it. And they leave the area that you battle in and they make fun of you for losing. And then if you lose again at them again, yeah. they keep making fun of you or make fun of you more. And they'll even, if you mm-hmm. lose like three in a row... They even tell like the the next gym guy, not the trainer, but the guy at the very front of the gym, like, "Hey, are you this Dane kid?" And you're like, "Yeah." And like, "Well, I don't know if you should play." This other guy said you were really bad, and you're just like, "Oh, well, fuck that guy." <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then that also kind of ties in um, with something else that we had said, and I, I I just lost it. I had it, and then I lost it. <laughs> Um, shoot, I completely lost it. Uh, something about your end. No, it wasn't something about the end game being difficult. I don't remember. I don't remember. Moving on. Moving on. I'll, I'll, I'll remember it. Yeah. I'll remember it eventually. Was it about the, um, um, the, the, um, the rival kind of growing with you being more difficult, not just being like how being very simple and easy. Yeah. So uh, maybe something like that. And, uh, along the lines of that. Oh, Oh, now I remember, uh, the tally system, yeah. like your character, like the characters, like your player character and your rival are keeping track of how many wins you each have as a rivalry, you know, as a friendly competition between two people. And it's like, yeah, your your rival may not be, like, a huge jerk. They may just be a little bit of an asshole, but they're, you still yeah. love them, right, if they're your friend. But you keep track of of how many victories you have versus they have. Like, it's a tally system because they have that in Kingdom Hearts 1, when on when you're on Destiny Island and you battle fight Riku or when you race Riku and you, there's they keep track of that. It doesn't really do anything ultimately in the end in that game, but I think it could be something to a way that they could keep track of of certain elements in your progress and how the game can turn out yeah. in terms of difficulty uh later on in the or game. Or if you continually lose to the to the to the rival character, they can become more of that snooty rich guy. Versus if you beat them yeah. more, they become more like, oh, hey, maybe I'm not doing this the right way. Yeah, and then even then, oh, oh, that even gives me the idea <laughs> of like, okay, you lose to them constantly, right? So they become more snooty. And when it comes time to like, uh, and this is all under the assumption that you're, the the rival uh, is, is, their parent is the evil team leader, yeah. right? They side more with their dad the more snooty they become. Yeah. So instead of just fighting the evil leader on their own, you have to fight your rival again because they're working for them now or, like, doing something like that, like, on their side. And then you have to fight the team leader eventually. Yeah. Uh, but if you constantly win and they start to become, like, a really fleshed out character, like, rounded out character and start to see the error of their ways and grow, then they team up with you almost. Like, they, like... Hey, we're gonna go through this together, sort of deal. Yeah, and I, I'd love to see like, there'll be more double battles in the in the like the in that in that. Team I'd love to Fortress see hunt like break yeah. Down. I'd love to see more of a of of a non-static rival versus that very static rival being. Hey, I'm here, and I'm hard at the beginning, and then as we grow older, you grow stronger, and I stay the same. Yep, yep. Because the world they they always they. They don't let the world grow with you, and I feel like that's a really big flaw, especially because, like, the only way they kind of hint at that is that your rival gets stronger, but not much stronger, Yeah. You know? Like, I, I want it to be real, almost realistic, excuse me, that I can go see my rival's team and see how they were, they managed to defeat the gym leader 
that they supposedly defeated. Yeah, instead of it being like you know? this static team and you're like, how did you even win? You have like four how, type yeah. disadvantages. Yeah, like how how do you beat rock? Like how do you beat uh, uh, Roxanne with just a Torchic and you haven't evolved it to Combustion yet? Yeah, or like that. how like, did you do this? And you have a Skitty, and it's like what? How? <laughs> no, no, stop. That's not that's not real. Yeah, you tried like, four or five like different that. times, and you threw some Pokemon in the box just to make me look like a piece of shit. I know what you did. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's just yeah. that it's just that like, um, that level of. Of it's it's almost you know they're just a static character that's just supposed to be there to motivate you, but they don't motivate you because you don't, as I said before, you don't hate them, and I think that's a yeah. big motivator in especially for me. If I don't if I like somebody, I'm probably not going to want to fight them, but if I can't stand them, hell yeah, I want to put them down as much as I can because I want them to understand you aren't getting anywhere by being mean. Mm-hmm. I think what they've been trying to do is this friendly competition where it's like kind of like imagine like you you and your friends or roommates or whomever like or your brother and sister like sit down for like a game of Super Smash Brothers. Oh, yeah. It's incredibly competitive oh, yeah. and just like there's like name calling and this and that and all that stuff. And I feel like that's the kind of vibe they want to go for with this friendly competition because at the end of the day you still love them. Mm. It's like, yeah, they're we're talking all this smack and we're competing. You're making some assumptions here, Professor. But at the end of the day, I'm, I still got their back. <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't say I love them much anymore, but they're okay. They're still here. Yeah, I mean, like you know, it's <laughs> it's not like, but you you get yes, what I'm saying, yeah, right? Yeah. It's like it's just you don't you it's, don't hate. It's a different... I, I mean, I, 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 I mean, my my roommate, I, me and him, and have have had heated arguments about various different things. But I will still bend over backwards for this guy because I love him to death. He's basically my brother, no matter what. Right. No matter how angry we'll get at each other, two seconds later we can make a joke, and it's fine. Yeah. And, and because it, we and know so, like, no matter I, what, I no matter like how heated for, like, we get, we're not going to hate each other. <laughs> it's not yeah. going to get that way. I think more than no matter how angry we get with yeah. each other, we're not going to start hating each other for no reason. Of course. Of course. And I think that's what they're trying to emulate a lot with the rivals right now. But the thing is that the rivalry doesn't show any sign of like competition. Like not all, like in terms of like there's no like banter or anything. It's just kind of like, "Hey, let's do the thing." Especially with How. How is like probably the worst offender of this where he's just like, "Hey, let's yeah, do the How thing." Yeah, How was Oh, looks like I lost yeah. again. Shucks. And but like you fight like like you battle Gladion and he's like you're worthless or something like that and it's like I'll show you and then at the end of the day he's like huh you surprise me good job or something like that you yeah know? like something to that effect and and even like the rival like the Kalos rival as as like flat as a character they were I think they're like they're they're prodigy esque background could have worked well with their character in in like they know they were born and raised to to be a pokemon trainer that's what their whole purpose in life and they're not necessarily good at it but it's definitely like there could be a friendly competition with it because they're they're not easy by any means but they're also not difficult they're kind of just like meh it's a very meh battle when you fight the the x and y rival of uh Sal uh serena or callum yeah I just want you to let you know, uh, on my end, I got almost none of that. Okay. I assumed I know what you were talking okay. about. Like I, I, I could pick it up from different pieces of it, but I just <laughs> threw it. It was like in the very div. Okay. And it just kept going down. I mean, I can, I can get where you're going at. Don't worry. I can. It's, it's been happening a little bit yeah. throughout. Yeah. The... And you'll hear it. In yeah. Post. You'll hear it and be like, "Oh, that's what." He yeah. Was and e either way, I, I know where we're going because you, you haven't changed subjects in between that so far, so that that helps. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Like, essentially, just for uh, TL TLDR, I want uh, a dynamic rival. I want. A very interesting story with a twist. Yes. Uh, and that twist mainly being that the evil leader is the... Or the parent of your rival is the evil leader. Uh, because they're rich. 
um and choices really that's kind of really it i want choices a dynamic uh rival character and and a and a plot twist yes i I would love a plot and that'll make me happy for a single player campaign yeah i mainly just want to i just mainly want a dynamic story i don't want something that's very flat yeah so I think – Like I don't care if I can predict it. I just want to be able to say like, yeah. oh, that's actually really cool that they did this. Yeah. I mean I don't, I don't want – I don't want to be able to predict it. I don't like predicting things that are coming up in, in a game. No. But as far as it just being fun, I want it to be fun for the sake of being fun. I don't want it to be fun because yes. I'm trying to make my own fun. Like I don't want to have to make my own challenges like the Nuzlocke or anything like that. No, exactly. But I think that's I think that's good. We're about two hours, so I think it's good for this one. Yeah, I think we'll. I think so. Yeah, I think we'll call it here because I think we put in some good insight. Plus, you have all that extra stuff. Yeah, to me. <laughs> I now have about five hours of stuff. It'll be all right. I'll get it. Hey, <laughs> hey. But I enjoy these talks. I think we should do these more often. Yeah, something like this I think will be fun. Uh, I think if we go in with more, uh, like maybe pick a topic of of like the broader discussion that we've had and hone in on it and expand on it, I think that could be cool. I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, this was a good proxy episode, Professor. Thank you for joining me here. Uh, thank you for having me. I super appreciate it. It's it's not very often I get to go on other people's channels. Uh, and do stuff. It's also not very often I where always, I think I either a... of us get to talk about Pokemon to this level. No, I was actually talking about this with my with my father the other night, uh, where I this is the first time I've had a a conversation about Pokemon um, with someone at the same level of enthusiasm and like same mindset in a while. Yeah, and uh, it's very and so being nice. Able to bounce off these ideas w- was really cool because I get I like I get a lot of people who maybe just don't really care as much or they they like the ideas but they don't contribute yeah they don't like yes and it so it's oh this is this is nice this is really cool yeah it's it's nice for me too because i don't get a lot of the yes and either throughout that Mm -hmm. and it's nice to be able to talk in depth about random theory shit or or anything like that yes absolutely because then i think um are you busy tomorrow night um i was gonna try to take like a night and just like relax a little okay yeah <laughs> what about wednesday wednesday is my stream night stream night um, right yeah so i stream on wednesday nights friday nights saturdays and sundays that schedule is probably going to change uh soon but that's where it is at the moment, and that's what this week is going to be for me. Okay, because um, cause I have with, – with my current job, I always have a Wednesday off, and mm-hmm. I always want to try and make a uh, – I want to try and make the episodes of this podcast, kind of record them on Wednesday, release them on about a Friday. Right. Because throughout the week, I work Monday, Tuesday, or Thursday, Friday, depending on the week, from 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. Right, and right. then weekends is is mornings, so that's 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 a I get home and I just want to sit down. Yeah, I mean, hey, next week I'm not going to be working for a while, so I'll have a part time job probably, and that's about it for a little bit. Um, so my Wednesdays are a bit more open, uh, for for at least a little bit. Okay, because I'm I'm off every Wednesday, so it'll. It'll be a little easier on that yeah. front. So I'm I'm gonna try and get everything with a server set up to be the ramble on server, so to speak. That'd be cool. And just kind of have people in and, and do what I can with it. All right. All right, but this was Sounds good. This was good. This was good. This is fun. Another fun one. Yeah. Should I stop my recording? Not yet. No. Because I haven't <laughs> done the ramble on outro yet. There we go. Let's go All for right, it. Are you ready then. to hear this? Because I think you're going to love it. Uh, let's go. Because the Ramble on outro is Never Stop Questioning. <laughs> mm. This has been mm. Dane with love Professor it. Sacrum. I said that right, didn't I? Hi. <laughs> yeah, Professor Sacrum. You yeah. got it. Never Stop Questioning.
Have a good night. Bye. <laughs>